So titanium is a great metal, um, but currently very expensive, which is why it's only really used for spacecraft, air, air shuttles, those sort of things. Uh, the aim is to reduce the cost of production. Um, currently you need crazy high temperatures and uh, a lot of money go, gone into that. So instead we're trying to use electrolysis to produce titanium. And so the idea of that is essentially like a battery, a battery has a chemical reaction that produces electricity. We send electricity into the system, which then hopefully makes a chemical reaction occur, it forces it to happen, and thereby making titanium that way. So the substance I'm working with, it's two powders that I mix together. One's titania, so that's actually very common and easy to get a hold of, and that's um, a little bit of titanium with oxygen put together. Um, the other one is sodium carbamate. So the idea is that um, the titania doesn't melt on its own. When it's part of that mix, you can melt it at that lower temperature. And so, again, to try and reduce cost of titanium without that sodium carbamate in it, then you'd likely have to run it at a higher temperature, which means more energy. So in aquifers, which is where we get all our water from, um, there's a lot of bacteria which live in biofilms, which are really hard to sample because they're really far under the ground. So there's a new technique um, which involves sonicating to remove these biofilms. Um, but no one really knows anything about how it works other than it does work. So my problem is understanding how far the radius um, it can sample is. Also the best equipment that we could be using. So kind of finding the best frequencies and power and um, everything to design a piece of equipment. I built a fake aquifer, which is sort of just a big container with gravel and water in it. It has a fake well in it. And then I grew up bacteria in little bags on gravel and I grew them for like nine months. And I buried them in this fake aquifer at different distances and then vibrated it at different frequencies with different equipment and um, measured basically the bacteria that we could sample from that. I've managed to make a model of both acceleration through the gravel and the biofilm displaced with distance and therefore acceleration. So you can kind of see how far we're actually sampling in an aquifer. We're hoping to actually design a piece of equipment that groundwater scientists can use. They can go out into the field, they can find a well, they can put this piece of equipment in the well and then use that to sample. And it's a lot cheaper than using a core sample. You actually have to dig the ground up or having to bury a sampling piece of equipment for like six months. This you could just do in like three minutes and it would be cheap and all done. For my research project this year, I'm working on developing documentation uh, and an understanding of the new gas-fired steam boiler that's been installed here at the CAVE department. So the first phase of my uh, project has been developing detailed piping and instrumentation diagrams of both the boiler house and the um, supporting steam distribution system and condensate return system. I've been following a couple of international standards and it basically has involved mapping and annotating all of the valves, pipes and equipment found throughout the steam system. The end use is that people that are in the future looking into the system are able to grab these maps and be able to easily locate um, and find you know, relevant pieces of equipment or uh, anything that they're looking for as part of the system. I've also been checking the safety measures in place to make sure that the steam system will operate um, safely. My project is extracting magnesium from olivine with the long-term goal to make a magnesium-based cement. To produce calcium oxide, you release CO2. A magnesium-based cement firstly doesn't emit CO2 and secondly has a lower calcination temperature. I need to extract magnesium from olivine. Olivine is quite insoluble in water. I've looked at changing the temperature, I've looked at changing the pH, I've also looked at injecting CO2. And from my research, I've decided to stick with the uh, pH. So I'm using an acid as it works better at lower pH than higher pH. And for the acid, I've selected ammonium bisulfate. The main reason for this is it can be regenerated within a process. Um, whereas others, once I've used, you'd have to be continually buying new acids. For my project, I'm working with a civil PhD student. So he's working on designing the cement so it's structurally sound, whereas I'm working on extracting the magnesium from the olivine to support him. We've got quite a big group of um, researchers here at UC who are all 
working on these, these redox flow batteries, which are sort of solar batteries that let you have really large scale storage. But the problem that we're having is that they're not currently charging very well. We only absorb a very small fraction of total solar radiation, and that's mainly UV. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get them to absorb more visible light as well and kind of enhance the charging process. I'm just doing a little bit of research towards um, doping our little titanium dioxide nanoparticles with different chemicals and impurities and what that'll do is that'll allow us to absorb more sort of total light when we're doing that charging reaction. The first stage is mixing a whole bunch of clear chemicals and then hoping that something white precipitates out. That's my titanium dioxide but it's sort of it's randomly oriented so I've got a then I guess go into the next stage which is, is getting it to be a little bit more crystalline and have sort of a nicer structure. If we can get something that's sort of reproducible and maybe able to be scaled up then it could be quite promising um, for improving the charging. Mm -hmm.